What's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Jonas. This is a special bonus episode. It's episode 98 so we're rapidly approaching the magical 100th episode and uh, today we're going to be talking about the Chris Jericho cruise, the Jericho rock and rage over at sea part de, uh, and we've got uh, two special guests on the line that were there. They were there in the Bahamas on the the, the Norwegian Pearl and uh, they're going to tell us their adventures uh, in their kind of four or five days they were there on the Jericho cruise. Uh, but before we do that just one little plug for myself that I want to throw out there normally at this time uh, at the beginning of every podcast I throw out all of our social media links where to find us on Twitter on Instagram on Facebook etc I'm not going to do that this time I'm just going to throw out one plug and that's where to find us on the uh, wrestlingwithjohners.com website so visit wrestlingwithjohners.com and uh, you've got all of our podcast episodes up there all of our interviews all of our exclusive articles our daily news updates our links to our merch and so much more so check that out so wrestling with Jonas all in one place and that's wrestlingwithjohners.com so please check that out uh, but that leads us very nicely to our special guests and i want to introduce uh, chris martin otherwise known as the, the rapper half decent and uh, heather uh, you're both fresh off of the uh, kind of plane having spent last week on the norway and Pearl, uh, how are you both? Are you kind of uh, recovering from your uh, your week away with Chris Jericho? I'm very good, thank you. Very good. It was an exciting week, and a uh, little bit of a uh, little bit more sleep since I've arrived, um, which has been nice. But yeah, very good. Yeah, it was amazing. Sure Such a good time. I'm sure you're both jet-lagged uh, to hell. But, uh, <laughs> brilliant to have you back on home turf, back on uh, on home soil. But uh, yeah, so really, I just want you to kind of give our listeners a bit of a lowdown on your experience out there. Um, I know that it's it's only into its second year. It's the second Rock and Wrestle Rager at Sea, um, hosted by Chris Jericho. Um, I think the first one was funded by Chris Jericho. Um, but I know the first one completely sold out and there was a lot of demand uh, for tickets. Um, uh, to, to you know, be on the second cruise and uh, first of all kind of what prompted you uh what was the kind of initial uh flame that, that, that kind of got you to, to buy the tickets want to be part of the the rock and rager uh rock and wrestle rager at sea part two then what what made you want to buy tickets for this one well i think i can answer this the first one was actually uh my birthday weekend um it wasn't in 2019 it was actually in 2018 so it's yeah. been a year and a few months um so looking for things to do on your birthday and the last cruise had uh, Mick Foley doing his um, what is now the the kind of one night in hell stand up that he's it's now on the network so he was premiering that on the cruise um, I always wanted to see Kenny Omega wrestle and they had the main event of um, if, I, if I remember this rightly it was uh, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks versus Cody Jericho and I can't even remember who the third yeah, person team was. Team Alpha versus Team Omega, wasn't it, from a couple yeah. of years ago? I remember that, yeah. Yeah, so th those two things, um, and obviously it being my birthday, made me feel like, wow, this is this is an incredible thing I didn't even know was going on, and I'd really like to try and do it. And I just found out about it too late, and then I just kept in touch with what was, was happening and saw the announcements come this year and really wanted to make it happen, really wanted to make it a thing that you could do, and... Uh, there was a payment plan that meant you only had to pay something like a hundred dollars a month and that made it a lot easier to go yeah let's do it and uh yeah it just all worked out so that we could actually go but um mostly wanted to go the first year as well and i think the lineup this year um was a lot better for wrestling um not so much for music and a lot of the people that went on the first one last year um kind of say the same thing apparently so um yeah. but this 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 was great to have the involvement of AEW as well and I think it just came at the perfect time um to go on something yeah. like this. I, I was going to say that because the first one happened pretty much directly after All In, which took place in September 2018, and it was kind of at the back end of that year. Um, but uh, since then, so much has happened with AEW happening in January last year. So they're now celebrating their first anniversary. So you've got you know, pretty much all the AEW crew, uh, crew on this cruise. And uh, there was an episode of AEW Dynamite, which I'm sure we'll speak about very, very soon. So, so much more of an established kind of... Uh, a team that were part of it setting it up the second time around so it probably ran a bit smoother there was a lot more to do and probably more acts involved because they knew how much of a success the first one was uh but but heather over to you kind of you've been a wrestling fan for a few years uh, 
just yeah. like Chris has. Uh, you must have been really, really excited kind of going into this, kind of in, in the in the days and the weeks leading up to kind of setting off uh, to the oh, yeah. Norwegian Pearl. I mean, how excited were you? What were you looking forward to most? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that you booked one or two things already to, to do on That's there, it. but what sort of yeah. things were you most anticipating? Um, well, I, um, I just like Chris, you know, we're really excited to go. Um, we wanted to go on the first one, didn't work out, so we knew yeah. whatever happened, we were going to have to go on this one because it feels like a once in a lifetime experience because of how much there is. Um, you know, you've got um, there's a lot that's included, uh, which we'll obviously going kind to of go through in a little while. But one of the things that was an add-on was meeting Ric Flair. So that's something that we decided that we were going to go ahead and purchase because, again, you know, he's an old dude. Like, you never really know <laughs> how long you've got to meet Ric Flair. So we were like, let's do that. Let's make sure that we do that. And that's something I was really excited to do. Um, I have never really done anything all inclusive before either. So yeah. usually when Chris and I go on holiday, it's we go visit a new city, we pack light, you know, and we just we submerge ourselves in culture and you know, maybe we, we do a bit of work, you know, work on either the music or or something like that. And this was like our opportunity to really um be extravagant if you like and really yeah. kind of go all out and have someone look after you and i was also really excited about that cruise life hashtag cruise life yeah. um <laughs> but beforehand we actually went to miami because it set sail from miami so we decided to do a weekend in miami first and wow. anybody considering doing a, a cruise like this i would recommend to do the same thing because yeah. It meant that we got to see a little bit of the, you know, the place where we were setting off from, spend a couple of days relaxing before we kind of got really, really busy on the cruise. Cool, cool, cool. Well, before we kind of break down what happened on each individual day and who you met and what you did, Chris, um, I want to kind of just kind of uh, speak to you uh, and shine a light on you for a few minutes, because I I've mentioned quite a few times um, on the podcast and through the various social media groups that uh, that uh, we're a part of to support wrestling with Jonas, of course, that um, you are the, the rapper Half Decent, of course, uh, you produced uh, and wrote the uh, kind of the, the theme music to the Wrestling with Jonas podcast. So what uh, the listeners would have heard at the very top of this show uh, was uh, done by your fair hands. Um, but you are quite uh, an experienced uh, rapper. You've been doing rapping for quite a while. Um, uh, but but tell us a little bit about your your rap career when you first got into it, when you started taking it seriously. Uh, what you've been doing, what you've been doing, kind of throughout uh, these years as a rapper, and uh, kind of what you're up to more recently than uh, than Chris. Right, um, yeah, I'll try and uh, fire through some things. Uh, started making music through mostly my love of movies, actually. So I, I started to get into musicals and films like The Blues Brothers, and I always wanted to write um, write scripts and direct movies, but I was always into the, the music side of it as well. And I'm, I'm in my 30s now, so back when I was maybe 13 to 15, I was looking at trying to make my own movie and back then it wasn't as easy. You couldn't make movies on your phone. You couldn't <laughs> edit stuff really easily. You had to actually deal with film. So I started to etch more into making music and I was um, producing a lot more and realized that I could probably make an album in my bedroom easier than I could make a movie in my bedroom. Um, I wasn't clever enough to come up with the idea of paranormal activity, obviously, but um <laughs> That, that kind of started it. Um, by the time I was 15 and just finished GCSEs, I knew that music was what I wanted to do. And I really just cared a lot more about writing lyrics and writing lyrics that meant something about my either my personal life or things that I've seen or stories that I've created. So I always knew that I didn't want a bragging rap name or anything like that. And that's where the name Half Decent came from. And I used to produce for other rappers whilst I was still learning how to rap and learning how to produce. Um, in around 2010, uh, my first release, Pieces of Life, came out um, under Half Decent and originally from Oxford. That started to get me a bit of a name in Oxford. Um, ended up supporting quite a few good acts such as Hot Chip, Chase and Status, um, playing a lot of good venues around the country and festivals. Now I'm on my 12th release. Um, I had a new single called Sleep Paralysis out, which you can check out on YouTube or Spotify. That's doing quite well. 
and um, just preparing for a tour and an album this year. So uh, I've been able to play pretty much all over the world now and um, get some shows out there. And I also managed to mix it with my love of wrestling as well. So there's some quite a lot of wrestling related lyrics as well as movie culture lyrics in there. And it, it kind of it kind of fits. I'm able to just do what I like to and, uh, you know, it's fine. It's creative and it's uh, it's definitely successful. So it's all really good. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I really recommend kind of checking uh, Chris's stuff out. And uh, so, so um, where can they find you? Obviously, you've got some social pages. You're on on YouTube. Do you want to throw out some some pl- uh, plugs now, Chris? Yeah, if you just go um, at Half Decent Music, um, either Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, halfdecentmusic.com also exists. Um, and if you want to see me live, I've got a show in Oxford on April the fourth at the Port Mahon, and a show in London um, at the Bread and Roses which is actually a free show on April 10th. Um, so if you want to save yourself a bit of money, you can go to a free show for that one. So It's always a blast. Like, I can't recommend seeing Chris live enough. You always have an awesome time. Very, very fun. Yeah, yeah, same here, and uh, I'll make sure that all of the um, all of the uh, website addresses and uh, links uh, that you've just mentioned are attached to the description of this episode, so that my listeners can check you out just with a click of a button. But back to the Jericho Cruise, back to the, the Rock and Wrestle Rager Part Two. Yeah. So, when did you set out from the UK? Then, uh, what 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 airport did you set out from? What what time did you set out? And when did you uh, land in Miami? Ooh, so we went, um, to, we, so we live in Croydon, um, so we decided we went from Heathrow, so we decided to just get a quick hotel in Heathrow the night before, because our flight was really early, it's like... Um, our flight was really early yeah, on Friday the Friday 17th, morning. so um, yeah. that was the, uh, so the Friday before the cruise itself, so um, we landed in Miami around, uh, just around one o'clock on, on that Friday, Um and we went out there with my my DJ theoretical, um, so we were able to spend the cruise with him as well. So um, yeah, we we spent the weekend in Miami. Um, I think we spent a lot of time on the beach. I think we tried to oh, relax so a little nice. bit more, knowing that the cruise would be quite a a full on scheduled event. Um, There's also like a cool street party going on when we got there as well. We're not really too sure why because we didn't we don't know if there was any holidays or anything like that going on, but you know the Super Bowl is is going to be next week, so they were kind of prepping for that um, nearby where we were staying, and they had all of these awesome like market stalls just outside our, our hotel between there and the beach. So we were able to enjoy kind of a little bit of of that side of Miami as well, and the food was incredible. The food that they had on those stalls was so good. Our hotel was actually two um, two like buildings away from the famous scene in Scarface where um the guys chainsawed up um <laughs> so we we went to go and see that as well a little bit of sightseeing but it was very close to our hotel so if you think about that scene and what south beach is like it's uh it's obviously very different now compared to how it is in scarface or the 70s but yeah. it's uh it was a very nice vibe to just be able to look up and see palm trees and see the beach and the buildings are gorgeous too aren't they all like really art deco style there's, there's definitely a vibe there there's like a there's a mood in miami that you just don't really get anywhere else um and i feel like you know i would definitely want to go again even though when when we first got there it was like the weather wasn't great you know it was it was a bit windy a little bit of rain and we kind of thought oh god you know we've come here to a hot country (laughs) we were expecting to go on the beach and then you know by the next morning everything was perfect it was just beautiful um and like people won't really know this but um chris doesn't always do the best in the sun so i'm very pale he's very pale so he um, he doesn't always um, he doesn't always fare well on the beach, but because it was quite cloudy um, and it was very hot, it was just like the perfect temperature. So I could get a tan. Chris didn't burn up too much, um, and the water was lovely. Went in the sea, had a bit of fun, and just really really relaxed. It felt like we we had had a full holiday by the time we got to the port. So um, cool. Cool. we we got to the port Monday uh, mid morning. Um, and that's when it really started to get exciting, didn't it? Because there were all the fans were there, all the people were there all together. Everyone was dressed up in their kind of like wrestling t-shirts. And, um, and it made me think, you know, I need to get myself a couple more wrestling with John's shirts because, you know, I don't really, I've, I've not been a fan for a really, really long time. So I don't have as much, um, swag, 
as other wrestling fans might have. <laughs> um, but uh, at least I had my wrestling job with John's t-shirt on, so that was good. Um, so people could know that I was in it. But yeah, that was that was really cool, wasn't it, Chris? When we could see everyone at the port. Yeah, I think whilst we were waiting in the queue to get checked in, I saw Jake Hager walk past, yeah. and it was that kind of that was like the first person I'd saw that I was like, oh, there, there's Jake Hager, and I thought, oh yeah, they need to get on the boat as well. They're not already. <laughs> And I, I think one of the main themes of like it, most of the stories will tell everybody, in, including all the wrestlers, are just very they're, they're very open and out there, and they're just kind of walking around doing the same things you're doing, and it it almost denormalizes it a bit, or or, or normalizes it a bit yeah, more. Yeah, it's their holiday too. Yeah, um, it's yeah, really interesting to see. That was really beautiful. That's it, because we, we hold a lot of professional wrestlers up on a pedestal and kind of like godlike yeah. characters and superheroes and all that. But uh, yeah, they are just uh, living, breathing human beings. A lot of them are wrestling fans as well, so they're probably marking out uh, some of the uh, legends that are probably on board as much as you were. But uh, to tell us about the first day. So you, you got to Miami on on Friday. You eventually uh, boarded the ship on the the, the the Monday. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, what what was what was kind of the first day's activities? What was some of the first things? you did um let's say soon after getting on the boat well um the very first thing they actually have scheduled is uh fozzy play um as they leave the port so as soon as the boat starts to leave the port fozzy do their first set um and throughout the the week fozzy do multiple shows but all of them are different uh, for slightly different reasons and this first set i think was just it was a really good um if if you've not really heard much of fozzy before you you will like them after this first set it's like all of their hits it wasn't too long it was like around 45 minutes or maybe an hour and just leaving miami and seeing the sun set behind the miami skyline whilst you're moving away from the beach on the boat and you see obviously chris jericho as the front man of his own band on his own ship and everybody singing along it was just such an energy that i it's very rare to experience that sort of thing and i think for myself that was the first moment where i was like oh this week's going to be awesome <laughs> like it was just <laughs> you, the perfect beginning to it you didn't know what to expect either if you're not a fozzy fan and you're there for the wrestling which i think a lot of people were this year um i think everyone would have been like pleasantly surprised at how much fun it can be to like go to a you know a rock concert because you know, there's there's loads of different types of rock, obviously. Um, and on this boat, we managed to experience them all. Um, but Fozzy have got a really good way of bringing a lot of elements of different types of music together with wrestling fans. Um, so with wrestling, so that fans of both genres can enjoy it. And that was just, it just brought everyone together. And that was a, a big theme for the trip as well. It was like being being part of a big family whilst we were there everyone was like nice to each other and supported each other and it kind of started at that first game yeah. the wrestling community of course you know they all band together but uh, yeah so they've, they've all got kind of one big thing in common haven't they? and that's the wrestling but uh, obviously a lot a lot of uh, rock fans there as well and i was going to ask you i mean what are the what are the types of entertainment were there so you obviously you were there primarily for the wrestling obviously uh, there was going to be a lot of music going on but i know uh, or i seem to remember from the first jericho cruise there was uh, the racks there like comedians and podcasts and uh, you know things like that but what what are the forms of entertainment could you dip in and out of uh, throughout one of the days on the Jericho cruise, for example? Well, there was a, a legendary comedian by the name of Jake the Snake Roberts who uh, did a comedy uh. set. <laughs> that was the best. He's uh, not known for being a comedian. He's normally known for his very serious, very uh, uh, you know, d demonic promos. But uh, uh, I have heard that he, he does a bit of a comedy show. So how was that then? That was very funny. Oh my um, Surprisingly funny. Because he, he started off by going like, hey guys, like don't, you know, I'm going to ask you guys a favour, like don't shout out at me because I'll lose my place. But it was so polished, wasn't it? I, it was more polished than I expected. I, like I'm a big stand-up fan and I go to see comedians all the time and I I wasn't expecting this to be polished. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if that's... Even, even when you see like Mick Foley's stand-up shows, they are more telling stories. Yeah. And obviously if you're a fan of wrestling, it's it's good to hear those stories but jake actually did did a really good job at making sure the stories were a little bit more condensed a little bit more quicker to the punchline and they were also funny to people that don't like don't need to know wrestling it had a little bit of a mixture in there and uh 
more stories on the road, stories about traveling, stories about jokes that people play on each other, like all the ribs they would pull. Um, he threw yeah, in a story yeah. about The Undertaker. It's, yeah. it, it was really, yeah, it was a lot more polished than I expected, to be honest. Um, but it was very good, very good. Very uh, not suitable for children, though. Like, you couldn't, <laughs> you couldn't have brought, brought any, any kids in there. Yeah. But it was it was really we did that on the last on the night before last didn't we i think so, yeah i think that was the night before last, before last. Um, but i think bruce jingles who was the other comedian was, did a set the first night that we were there on the monday um but but what what happened at the cruise is that you just you can't do it all and i i kind of love being on the pool deck which is where all the wrestling was which is where the bars are it was really close to the buffet it's where the pool is the jacuzzi um, and so I kind of like try to make sure that the majority of the things that I did were there. Um, we're by the bar. We're <laughs> by the bar, exactly. <laughs> although actually I have to say, like, although it was, you know, free drinks, I didn't drink as much as I thought I would. Um, there was no, like, nobody was kind of like too drunk and there was none of that really going on. Um, everyone was definitely drinking. Everyone was drinking. Cool. But it was, it was and, and did you did you sit in on um, any any other uh, entertainers, any other comedy acts, or any yeah. of the podcasts that were going on? I know that Jericho did his own uh, uh, Talk Is Jericho podcast on the cruise. Uh, were, were you lucky enough, or were you able to kind of sit in on any of the other entertainment like that, for example? Yeah, we saw them all, didn't we? Yeah, we saw all of um, the Talk is Jericho's. Um, the first one was supposed to be with NWO, but only Scott Hall was the, the one that could make it. Both uh, both X-Pac and Kevin Nash had to to not go for personal reasons. Um, but as a fill-in, he had Booker T, DDP and Eric Bischoff. So it was still a very good kind of WCW as they were there and as it happened perspective. Yeah. Um, and that, that was a really good um, podcast. That was a, the first podcast we saw, um, as that was, was the, the first day. day. Yeah. Um, so we saw Fozzie. There was a bit of wrestling, and then we went to this, then we ate, and then we went to this uh, podcast taping. It was just, that first day was just, like, like, overwhelmingly amazing. That podcast is well worth a listen. So if you're if you're thinking about, um, oh, you know, which talk is Jericho, should I go to first? That's probably the one. I don't know, it's yeah. hard to use because there was a one with Ric Flair after that and then the Guerreros. I don't know, Chris, what do you say? I think um, I think the Ric Flair one was really good. Um, I definitely think the... It, you're, obviously, if you're, if you're a fan of the NWO, there is a really good perspective and there were some stories that I hadn't even heard yeah. um, in there before. So that's really good. The Ric Flair one was a little bit more... Um, I don't know, it was a little bit of Ric Flair just having fun, which is good to see, but you, you, you just... Yeah. Just we saw him the night before, and you know he didn't he didn't look very very there, did he? When we had when we actually had our meeting with Rick Flair at the thing. That we yeah, did. you had a photo opportunity with him, didn't he you? He did, yeah, yeah. which was incredible and definitely worth the money. Um, but it was only about four seconds, so got to shake his hand, said nice to meet you. The softest hands, I'll say, the softest hands I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> so soft, I was like, oh, Rick, all right. Then. <laughs> That's all them years of rubbing baby oil into his muscles. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Um, but, you know, I was like, okay, I can see what, what girls are into. Um, but he, he was obviously there, there for the camera and, and he was wanting to make sure that we had a really good photo. So he was just kind of like smile the whole time because he wanted to make sure the photo was right. And I was a bit worried about him. I, I won't lie. Like I said to Chris, I was like, oh, my God, I don't know if he's okay. He looks really, he looks really ill. And then when we listened to the, to the podcast that he did the next day, he explained that he'd actually been to um, Rocky Johnson's funeral that day. And that's why, um, you know, that's perhaps why he was he was a little bit not as animated uh, that day. And that was, so we went to the Bahamas on Tuesday. So Monday we did what we did. And then Tuesday morning, eight o'clock was when we got to Nassau in the Bahamas. We spent the whole day there. And then when we got back, there was wrestling and then we met Ric Flair that night. So Wednesday was the day that we listened to the Talk is Jericho podcast with Rick. And that's when he was kind of him, his usual self and he was yeah. all exuberant and stuff. But it feels crazy to list it as well, doesn't it? It feels like we packed so much in, even in a couple of days. Um, Absolutely. Wednesday morning was cool, wasn't it, actually, Chris? We did something really awesome on Wednesday morning. So, yeah, one of the things that they had on the cruise um, was DDPY. Um, so you could do... DDP yoga with DDP. Um, cool. So we did that. 
um, I, I've got quite a bad shoulder, so I'm always up for trying anything out to try and fix it. And it's, uh, it's a good, solid workout. It was a lot of fun. Uh, he's a very motivational guy. Yeah. And uh, almost immediately after that, we got to see the 83 Weeks podcast um, with Eric Bischoff. Um, Conrad wasn't there, um, so he couldn't make it. Um, and to fill in, he had DDP. So um, we then got to uh, have a podcast with Eric Bischoff and DDP, which was a lot more like an interview with DDP than yeah. the standard format of the 83 Weeks podcast. Um, so that that was good as well. Um, we learned so much about DDP that we didn't know, and it was like the guy is just an incredible businessman. That's what I took away from it. I was like, this guy knows how to make something out of nothing and go after any opportunity. And you know, his whole his like, um, you know, his phrase now that he says is positivity unstoppable, um, and that's what he is. He's a positive guy. He wants everybody to think positively too. Um, and he believes that, you know, that you could be unstoppable when you think that way. So DDPY yeah. is very much, a, it's not just a physical exercise, it's mental too. Um, and it was a shame that we didn't get to do it the next day, actually, because I did two days of the DDPY. But the second day, we actually had our photo with Chris Jericho at the same time that the DDPY was going on. So we had to miss that, um, which was a bit of a kind of recurring theme. So Anyone who's listening who might be thinking about going to the cruise next year, uh, because they are going to do another one, a triple whammy, um, do bear in mind that you won't be able to do everything that you might see advertised because they schedule certain things at certain times and they're not changeable. So we weren't able to do um, we weren't able to do any of the autograph signing because we made the decision to watch podcasts instead. Or watch wrestling instead and because we wanted to do those things and that was really important to us we didn't get you know any autographs signed by legends or AEW superstars um which is okay by us because we saw them all over the boat all the time <laughs> <laughs> they didn't really so, so let, let me ask you then you've obviously uh let's say, given us a, a great insight to the first couple of days there where you, you met rick flair and you've listened to the various podcasts you've done some some ddpy which is a uh, pretty cool uh you had a photo opportunity with uh, chris jericho which comes as part of the package i understand but uh, yeah. were there any other photo opportunities that you had or did you have your, your photo taken with any other wrestlers while you're on board I didn't because I got a bit shy. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that this is actually a good point to mention, like some of the things that you do see. Um, so I went to go see MVP's one man show and um, it was all right. It was, it was pretty good. He he mentioned a lot about his own um, kind of personal experiences and how he got away from crime and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and Chavo Guerrero um, walked in halfway through and um mvp acknowledged him and then guerrero was like he's one of my best friends and guerrero sat in the front row and during the interval and at the end um chavo was taking photos with everybody just because he wanted to and it was so we i managed to meet him there um and get a photo with chavo guerrero in my wrestling with john's t-shirt um, Yay. <laughs> um ju- just on the off chance because he was in the same place and um that that happens constantly throughout throughout the week um so i think if you if you want the photos with them you you have plenty of opportunity to get them and uh the way that the actual autograph sessions or the meet and greets were they were separated into two different times and you would be given a time slot where kind of half the boat is split up and it's you have the opportunity to go to an AEW meet and greet where there's cody and kenny and young bucks and mjf and all of that um, or a Legends one as well, which is where it was Booker T, DDP, Scott Hall. Um, so, so you do have those opportunities. But for us, it, it became so normal seeing people around the boat. We, we just felt we didn't want to wait in the queues and just just to get a photo of people that, you know, we were walking around and, and seeing anyway. Um, yeah. We ate dinner next to, um, next to Eric Bischoff. Um we draw. We we saw Jake the Snake picking out a cake at the buffet. Um, and walking around on the deck. Uh, around. Yeah, walking around. Um, Joey Janella for some reason oh, was everywhere. always out. I, I don't even <laughs> think he had a room. I'm confident <laughs> he didn't have a room. Um, we we saw him pretty much everywhere, and he was the first. Um, I think he was the second person we saw um, whilst on the boat. Um, and then later on, I think it was the last night they had Cody wrestle Joey Janella. 
which was kind of like the final of the the kind of house show stuff they were doing. And I saw Joey Janela at the bar and offered it to get him a drink. And his drink of choice was a pina colada, if anybody's interested in what, which doesn't sound like a bad boy drink. But at the same time, he's on a cruise, he's on holiday, he can, he can drink what he wants. Um, he was celebrated in the Bahamas as well, which I thought was really cool because he was the only wrestler who did that. Even the women didn't get their hair braided in the Bahamas because they were offering that. That's cool. and it was like free hair braiding for everyone. But the one person I think we saw, the, 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 just to mention, the one legend that we saw the most of was Booker T. He spent oh, yeah. probably most of his time in the buffet. And every time we were there, I think we saw him. So um, there's plenty of opportunity to to chat to Booker T. And uh, I asked him what his favourite part of the cruise was. And he so humbly said his own podcast, um, which... <laughs> Everything I was in. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's no surprise that he's at the buffet because he's probably bulking up for the rumble. Because uh, I've got my money down that Booker T is going to be a surprise, uh, surprise uh, entrant in the in the in the Royal Rumble. But uh, let it's me ask possible. you a bit more about let me ask you about the a bit more about the wrestling because I believe that uh, AW Dynamite was pre-taped with a 24-hour delay, so usually it'd be live on a Wednesday night. I understand that you guys saw it on the boat on the Tuesday night when they did the recording. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw, I mean, I, I've seen every episode of AEW Dynamite. I, I, I watch it every week. I cover it every week on the podcast. Yeah. And when I was uh, reviewing this week's, or last week's uh, Dynamite with uh, Rob from uh, Bob Culture Podcast uh, th- this weekend, check that out uh, in the archive, wrestlingwithjohners.com. Um, we, we were full of praise. I honestly thought, having seen all of the previous Dynamites, that this was the best AEW Dynamite they had done. The, the atmosphere on the boat looked electric. The the action in the ring was great. All the segments really worked. The promos were great. Um, and I thought it was a, a really satisfying, really enjoyable episode of Dynamite. And that's watching it from the comfort of my own living room. What was it like <laughs> to be there? To what, what was it be like to be there uh for uh, for for dynamite for last week then on uh, the norwegian pearl well it was so incredible that we watched it back when we got back and <laughs> um it does come across so electric but it was it the crowd were way louder there yeah. and then mm. it, it was um obviously there's that clip going around of uh judas being played as jericho's entrance and that was just incredible it was so so loud and Everybody, I don't even know if everybody really expected the tag title change at the start for Kenny to win the belt and uh, for Hangman Page to kind of separate off. Um, There was a little bit more of a segment where AEW went to break that um, not everybody would have seen, but the Young Bucks were celebrating in the ring with Kenny and they were telling Hangman Page to come to the ring and he was kind of like, no, I don't know why the Young Bucks are here and he walked away. So I think there's going to be a bit of a thing there. Maybe a good... Uh... He, got, he got body surfed away, didn't he? He was being carried away by the fans. We saw yeah, that uh, on, yeah. on Fight TV because Fight TV show everything that happens between the commercials. So, ah, yeah, that, okay. that was an interesting section. That was an interesting section. Yeah, so that was really good to see. Um, the matches, I, th- I think everybody delivered. Um, there was only one match, which I think is going to be on AEW Dark, which was Kip Sabian versus QT Marshall. Um, right. Not not a bad match. We went to go and see... Uh, the fight forever wrestling. Um, yes. Yeah, you remember that we saw him up Kip close. Kip super bad. Yeah. Every time I've seen him wrestle, I've been like, you know, second in the crowd. <laughs> I've been so close to watching him wrestle. So, so you, you good. had you had a good vantage point, then you had good seats. Yeah. Uh, tell us about your your view of Dynamite on Wednesday. We were pretty much right underneath where the camera was, um, so the the they were wrestling towards us because obviously when they film, they're you know they're you know showing the titles to the camera and stuff like that so we were pretty much under where the camera was so we didn't actually get on tv but um we had a great view because there was some seats where um people were sat down by the ring and that was the only seated area and then we were the first people behind that seated area but it meant we were only about six rows back yeah, from the actual the, ring. The segment where Joey Janela goes and he he like kisses Jesus's hand or prays with the guy who's dressed up like Jesus. If you saw that on Dynamite, we were just behind them. So right. Okay. If you watch that back, you might see us. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe we're, I think that was that day, wasn't it? There's so much wrestling. I can't even remember what what matches were on which days. To be <laughs> well, honest. You, you mentioned the opening match where the tag title was changed hands, but I, I want to focus on the main event because you had Moxley versus Pac um, for the number one contender spot to face Jericho at Revolution on the 29th of February. Now they they fought up the stairs, didn't they, into kind of like the balcony section? Was that close to near where you were? 
We were actually stood there the night before. Ah, okay. Sure. <laughs> so, um, we wish we had been stood there because that would have been really, really good. So we didn't actually see that because we were too far because we were right by the ring so we didn't we didn't see we couldn't see what was happening so one of the yeah. other reasons we decided to watch it back on dynamite is because we wanted to know what had actually happened up there um but that looked insane one thing i'll mention about that match that i think is is quite quite funny is that as it happened there was a, another boat that pulled up alongside us probably to try and get a better view of what was going on <laughs> It was like the boat just slowly, just slowly pulled up next to us. It was Vince McMahon's boat doing a bit of spying, I'm sure. Probably, yeah, Must yeah. have been. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there was like, um, your boat sucks, chance. Um, <laughs> for the whole crowd. And Pac really didn't like it. So Pac was just like, yeah, he didn't look too pleased. Here. Come on, like, watch, yeah. watch what we're doing. And that was, that, was a, that was an important moment, I think, because... You're on a cruise. You're having an amazing time. You're all liquored up. You know, you're you're just having a you're having a bit of a rowdy time. You're not necessarily thinking about the hard work that these guys are putting into the work they're doing in the ring. Not only the fact that it's you know it's a wrestling match and it's Pack and Moxley and they're going to kill each other because they're two you know tough son of a bitch, but they also are having to do it when the boat is swaying and it's it was it was moving and. You know, it's. I think Scorpio Sky summed it up best because he uh, he kept saying when we were there, I don't know about y'all, but this boat moving like all the time. He's like, I don't want to, I don't want to give an excuse, but this boat moving. Um, as to why they didn't win the tag championships. So I, I think we probably at that point we were like, okay, we should be a little bit more respectful to these guys because they're working really hard, and it was just, it was just such an incredible show. Really, really, really was. Let me ask you another question then, because one clip uh, that's doing the rounds on the internet, you've obviously mentioned uh, Chris Jericho's entrance coming out to Judas. Like yeah. I say, it's, it's, it's uh, his entrance. He's Le Champion, the AW World, type, World Champion, coming out to his music from his band on his boat, his cruise. So that was a special occasion. But uh, another clip that's doing the rounds on the internet is John Moxley doing uh, karaoke to uh, ah. was it a, a, a Neil Diamond song. Was it Sweet Caroline or something like that? Was, you, was you present? Did you, did you, did you witness that? So unfortunately not. And this is one of the great things about the cruise actually, is that you hear these stories and you don't know if they're true or not. So that, <laughs> so the next day we heard, um, I heard two different stories, uh, two days in a row and we didn't make it to the karaoke. I think we went to, we never went to a podcast or went somewhere else. And, uh, the karaoke is just billed as karaoke. So it's for the fans to do. You don't realize that the wrestlers are going to be there. And the first night, sure. um, the first night it was, somebody just said, oh, I can't believe John Moxley was singing Neil Diamond at karaoke. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then you hear it more and more whilst you're on the boat. And we, you don't have very much internet while you're on the boat, very, if none whatsoever. So it, it kind of gives this bit of a, did it actually happen? Um, and then the next day, we heard that Luchasaurus sang Gangster's Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been awesome. Which, which I've now I've got, to, since, I've got to try and find a video of that. <laughs> there, is, there is videos of that that I've since seen. And it's you start hearing all these random stories and, and think, well, we've got to go to karaoke. We've got to find this out. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, obviously since. Uh, there's even one of Darby Allen. Um, I've seen a video of Darby Allen, John Moxley and Priscilla Kelly doing Bohemian Rhapsody. Which um, is cool. quite, which is quite a, a song to hog the the karaoke because it's about ten minutes long. But uh, <laughs> I guess if it's those three, you're just going to let them do it, aren't you? <laughs> they were everywhere around the boat, weren't they? Darby and Priscilla, they were. Yeah, they were all over the around. place. Yeah. Yeah, they oh, were. Cool. And, but, and then uh, go on, finish off, please, Chris. Oh no, I was going to say, but yeah, you you hear all sorts of different stories, and sometimes you don't know if they're true or not until you hear maybe three or four different people say it, but. Um, it looks like, uh, I guess if there's one thing we would do more if we go next time is spend more time at the karaoke because you don't know what you're going to see. Exactly. Full of surprises. And then there was the 80s tribute night on the final night. I'm guessing you were there. I mean, we've seen clips of Marco Stunt really rocking it uh, with, with Fozzie on. But like I say, they're all dressed up as uh, as uh, 80s alter ego. And you even had SCU, I believe, dressed up as uh, different versions of Chris Jericho. I've seen that picture floating around the Internet. But uh, that looks like an absolute blast. And uh, Marco Stunt, uh, like I say, he's OK as the rest of He's awesome on the mic. But uh, what did you enjoy about that night? We actually got to see it the night before, funnily enough. So they did a uh, 
they did a so the 80s night was the second fozzy set and then the final night is the one that is now going around i think that was like dress up in the decade that you were born in and yeah. obviously right. uh, jericho's dressed up in as as uh, john travolta from greece um <laughs> so yeah they, um they did that twice um so both sets and uh, the first night it was it was so un- like we didn't expect it at all we were like why is marco stunt singing and it was fozzy and friends and we thought oh it's gonna be fozzy with all the rock bands that are here on the boat so i'm not sure if we want to go see that but then it ended up being a fozzy cover set and they did things like sos by abba um and you know frankie goes to hollywood relax they did and, and they did them all kind of their own versions and that was insane and then at the end marco stunt comes out and he's like sometimes i wear my sunglasses at night and they were <laughs> like oh and then he does the song and chris goes you know i don't really like this guy like but over is over and this guy's over so you know i've got to give him his props now um and that was really nice so it felt like it was a little bit of a an eye opener into you know perhaps someone like marco who just became a crowd favourite from um, from the original. Was it from Double or Nothing, um, or was it from All In? Like he was on. He was. I think he was yeah. in the, the Rumble. Yeah, he was part of the Rumble. Yeah. Um, and just his journey must be incredible. Like to go from there to now being where he is, performing on stage twice with Fozzy and um, you know wrestling with Jurassic Express. That was just super cool. Um, but yeah, the crowd. I, I, I loved his entrance during the match on Dynamite when he wore the, the yellow life jacket of the, the life preserver. I thought that was. <laughs> oh yeah, really proud. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Wasn't it? Um, yeah, that was good. But he didn't travel with uh, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy because at the end, when we were leaving that queue for for exiting the port, basically you saw everyone. We stood next to Chavo. We saw Tony Khan. Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy were in front of us. Um, we saw Victoria as well actually there was one point actually where we were in the cabin I opened my door to leave the room and Victoria was just stood there and she's like hi I was like oh hello (laughs) what are you doing here very weird Um, but yeah so Marcus Dunn wasn't there and we were like oh I wonder if he's still still in the bar maybe he's (laughs) still on the bed Um, yeah they were they were absolutely amazing we did see some other rock bands as well Um, so I um you know, I live with a rapper, so I usually listen to rap music and don't get to listen to much rock. So being able to be on that boat, listening to music I wouldn't normally have listened to was absolutely incredible. We saw sets by the Vaudettes as well, who are kind of like a rock chick um, dance group, if you like. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, and Light the Torch, we saw. Um, we missed Kick Axe. Um, which was a shame because Jericho says that they're his favourite band um, and so Jericho was at those shows and uh, we also missed Rubik's Cube which we really wanted to see um, but quite a lot of these bands were on very late it was more of a late start, late finish kind of a cruise um, so if you're a morning person there isn't as much for you to do um, which is probably worth mentioning because I'm like, I usually go to bed quite early I'll be in bed by midnight and that's when a lot of this stuff starts, a lot of the music will start. Um, but like Chris, you managed to stay up a bit later some of the nights, didn't you, and see a bit more than I did? Yeah, most things started at about 11 in, in the morning, so like you've got enough time to get breakfast and things like that. And uh, But some of the stuff wouldn't end until kind of 3 in the morning and, and stuff like that. So it does it does become a lot of a late night um like a late night cruise um but, but that's where that's well. where you see the fun things that's i yeah. guess that's that's the le- <laughs> yeah. yeah oh chris you've got a really good story about um something fun that you did whilst on the cruise someone else that you met which person which one <laughs> <laughs> you um you had a drink with jake oh yeah so uh jake hager um I mentioned. I mentioned. I this thought he was going to say Jake the Snake Roberts. Ah, so I thought he was meant no. to be uh, off the booze, but uh, no, that no, would have no, been no. a story. But Jake Hager, a different Jake. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he he just every single night would just come to the pool deck and start drinking with everyone, and um, particularly the night Dynamite was on. You can and you can kind of see this in Dynamite. He's he's very chirpy, and he was <laughs> a lot more happier than he usually is. And yes. I think by the second night, you could tell that he'd pretty much been drinking most of the day. And uh, he just hung out with us all afterwards and just stayed on the pool deck and, and drank. And uh, I asked him what his drink was, and it, he, he drinks vodka and Coke, so uh, a little bit different to Joey Janela. 
um, with his pina coladas. Um, mm. And then, yeah, we just, uh, I, I got a photo, me and, my, me and my DJ got a photo with him. I, that's on his phone, so I haven't seen it yet. But um, that was that, that was fine. And he was just a generally nice guy to chat to. Um, as, as we were taking the photo, he did yell out, big dicks, um, <laughs> which made us all laugh, which just seemed to be a bit of a theme with him. He was just kind of running around shouting that quite a lot. So um, he just seemed, he seemed like he was very much enjoying himself. Um, but generally, really, really nice guy and chatted to everybody. And um, as much as obviously Jericho was a host of the cruise and they had the guest host of, of Ric Flair, I think. Uh, the unofficial host was Jake Hager because he was just everywhere saying hi to everybody and, and just really getting involved. And it was really nice to see that. Cool, cool. So, so we've got a couple of listener questions there. We've got a couple of uh, questions from our uh, Facebook community, the Wrestling with John's Facebook group. Um, so the first question is from uh, from Elliot. He's part of our uh, Wrestling with John's Facebook group. And Elliot wants to know what was the food like? So I'm guessing that was there like a, a 24-hour buffet there or was there different restaurants you could visit? Tell us a bit about the food that you could sample on the Jericho cruise. Um, well, I'll answer this because I'm the, uh, I'm the, the foodie um, out of the two of us. <laughs> Uh, which just means that I like to eat and I like to eat a lot, which I could do on this cruise. Um, now, I, I mentioned before that we like to stay by the pool deck because that was close to the buffet. Um, so that was basically all what we ate. Now, on the, on the morning of the Bahamas, we did eat in one of the other restaurants that you could go to just for breakfast. And that was great. We had at that restaurant, um, Chris had like a full English. Luke had a full English. Luke is theoretical, the DJ. Um, Lukey Saurus, as we now call him. <laughs> <laughs> Not Luchasaurus, it's Lukey Saurus. Um, and um, I had um, a breakfast of like pastries, hash browns, scrambled eggs. There was loads of great fruit. Um, the fruit. The food was fresh from all different nationalities. So you had lots of different types of food there. Didn't eat anything bad the whole time you were there. The best thing that I ate was a coconut cheesecake which I will be trying to replicate at home. Um, it was like a baked vanilla cheesecake with coconut in it, and it was just absolutely delicious. Um, we ate about four times a day, probably ate far too much, uh, but we also ate well. So it wasn't just, they had a burger station, and you could tell, I mean, I don't want to be offensive, but like the majority of the people that we saw that we're American, we're just going for burgers and fries and hot dogs and, and like that. <laughs> Um, and that, we didn't go for that. We didn't go for any of the burgers or hot dogs or anything because there was so much other delicious food. The salads were great, um, really well worth it. And and I, it is a bit shame that we didn't go to any of the other restaurants, but they just weren't convenient. It wasn't convenient to go to them. Um, and some of them you had to book as well. But we did walk past um, Cagney's, which was the steak restaurant that you had to pay for a bit more to go in. And we saw DVP having dinner with mm. Gabriel and Glacius. Um, the Jacksons having dinner with people who may have been their parents, hopefully not their wives. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that, that looked like the restaurant that people were going into. And one of the other things that I'll mention actually when it comes to food is that some places were blocked off for private events. So it was obviously that's where the wrestlers were going to have some, you know, some downtime and it meant that you could get in everywhere. So like the arcade, you can go into at times, you can go into the pool that was inside the boat some of the restaurants and um some of the other areas were just blocked off even though they were meant to be free and part of it so you didn't get to experience those but it didn't really matter because um you know we had buffet so Cool, yeah. cool. Let me ask you another listener question. This one is from uh, from Poppy, uh, part of our uh, Facebook community group, and uh, she wants to know uh, how much were the cocktails? Which ones did you sample, and did you get drunk with any wrestlers? Oh, oh, okay. Um, well, I answered Jake Hager. Not that, not that I completely. He was already drunk when I saw him, but um, yeah. Uh, the cocktails were, there were a bunch of Jericho themed cocktails. Um, we actually uh, paid in advance for the all you can drink package, which I think was an extra um, hundred dollars or so, which worked out definitely better. Um, so worth it. The, the, yeah. amount of, the amount of drinks you can get, you know, the, I, I mostly had rum and cokes, which were very nice. Um, but there was a lot of Jericho themed cocktails called like Nowhere to Rum instead of delicious. Nowhere to Run. 
Um, a little bit of the bubbly. There was a little bit of the bubbly, which we actually were given a, a few bottles for our for our room when we arrived, uh, which we didn't drink till late, which ended up uh, they were quite warm. Um, <laughs> they were still delicious though. I had mine. Uh, Long Island iced teas were very nice. Um, Bahama Mamas were very nice. Um, but mostly I stuck to the rum and cokes because I didn't want to mix my drinks too much. Otherwise, I, uh, otherwise I would have been Jake Haygood. Um, hey. <laughs> okay. I drank a lot of ginger and... beer because the boat was moving a lot. Um, and it is easy to feel, you know, a little bit of motion sicknessy as well mm. when you're on there. And you're having a good time, so you don't want to don't want to drink too much because... You know, with the swaying of the boat, it won't end up well, especially after you've been to the buffet about ten times. <laughs> <laughs> um, but all the soft drink, soft drinks are really good as well. And what they had for people who weren't on the drinks package were, um, uh, what's the name of the guy? Will Smith's son, Jake and Smith's water oh. company, Just Water. They had that as their water. So on the drinks package, for anyone who's thinking about this for next time, you can't get cans of soft drinks, bottles of soft drinks, or water. Um, that you can carry around with you you can get you know just tap water and um like squirty you can't get bottled mixes. water you, is, can't, get, yeah, you yeah. can't get any of that so we didn't know that when we when we got there um, and it didn't end up being an issue but i couldn't like just get a can of coke or anything like that i'd have i'd have had to have paid for that um but the, to answer um the rest of poppy's question the cocktails were between kind of 10 and 15 dollars each i think yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Um, and so the fact that we drank what we did over the over the time that we had meant that we ended up saving so much money. Even though I didn't drink a lot, I still drank more than ten cocktails across the five days, um, and that would have been my money gone. So cool. yeah, people probably spent okay. a lot. A final listener question this one uh, from Diane. She wants to know: uh, Would you go again? Uh, was it value for money? And would you recommend it? <sighs> So I, I said before we left, because I'm, I'm the kind of, I don't like spending money. I'll say oh, you don't need to know how much you paid for it, by the way. We don't need to know how much it costs, so don't tell us that. It. Don't think about how much it costs, because it won't matter, because you'll go there, and you when you're there, you'll feel like you've spent any amount of money to be there and to see what you see and experience what you experience. Um, 100% would recommend Definitely. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely recommend as well. Um, considering the amount of wrestling we saw, um, it wasn't just three nights of wrestling. It was, uh, well, it wasn't just four nights of wrestling, but each day was broken up into two sections. So there was kind of like an hour or an hour and a half at the start, and then there would be a break and a band, and then a two-hour um, thing at the end as well. So you you know you've got potentially four hours a day worth of wrestling. You've got bands that you can see. You've got DDPY. You've got podcasts that you can see. And if you really start to add it up, if, you know, if Jake the Snake comes to town and does a, does does his stand-up set, you might pay up to 50 quid to see that locally. Um, or if a podcast comes to town, you might spend, you know, 30 pounds to see that locally. And when you look at it like that, the amount of stuff that you've actually done, as well as going to, you know, several wrestling events in, in the same week, it really does become good value for money. Um, there was... I think as much as we said we couldn't see some of the things on AEW Dynamite, there was a lot of really good spaces on the deck where you could move around and get yeah. a good view of the ring or a good view of the bands. And there was so much going on, you weren't going to see it all. Um, I could definitely imagine that if all you wanted to do was meet wrestlers and get photos, then you could have done that and you would also gain more value for your money, depending on who you wanted to see or who you wanted to meet. Um, I think there's a little bit for everybody there. And it's... Uh, it, it, it was really good, Def, definitely worth it, especially the fact that you can pay in instalments so it doesn't feel like you're you're paying, you know, a month's rent on one thing. But and they do give you free things as well. Like we got some presents in our room, like every day. Um, our our kind of like steward was called Mel Gibson. Shout out to Mel. And um, he like left us some fun things in our room that, um, that we may or may not um, show you at some point. Um, um, they were really, really cool. Some little gifts and presents. And if you if you book, um, if you're one of the first 400 to book, you get like a, a exclusive T-shirt as well. Um, so and the further in advance you book it, the cheaper it will be for you in the long run. Um, and a lot. Of, what was really lovely, and I'll just kind of close with this on on this point, is that Jericho really respected and understood the fact that this was going to be 
some people's only holiday that year or only holiday for 10 years and he wanted to make it as special as possible for everyone he wanted to make sure that if if you're putting time and money into him then he delivers back for you everything he was so grateful he was so lovely um everyone there really 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 was and and that was what made it you know you could tell that they were putting a hundred percent into making it the best the best cruise ever and and you know much as I don't like spending money, I think I'll probably probably be uh, be putting down for um, cruise part three ASAP. Oh, so we are doing the triple whammy. I think we might do, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There we go. And, and, and uh, one of the final questions from me then, Chris and Heather, is uh, any advice for people thinking of going next year or within the next couple of years? Um, any any advice to make people kind of think carefully about going on these sort of cruises? I mean, you loved it. It's it obviously value for money and you enjoyed all your experiences there. Um, and it, it went in a blink of an eye. Um, but uh, any any kind of advice that you haven't already mentioned to any of my listeners thinking of going in the future? Um, definitely worth getting the drinks package, even if you're not a big yeah. drinker um it just it kind of makes sense um especially you know if you just want want stuff to drink throughout the day you are you are going to make the most of it um see as much as possible if you do go uh pack light you don't really need to uh you don't really need to take loads of stuff um they do close off the pool um because of the wrestling so yeah, the pool the pool that MG, mjf got thrown into is actually the only pool that's that's open and it is rarely open um so if you are looking on getting pool time because you think it's a cruise you don't actually get too much of that but there is a lot of space on the sun deck so you do get an opportunity to see a lot of sun and um and relax that way um but that is the that is the one downside with it being more a wrestling and rock cruise is that you know they do close off the pool because they need to fit the ring somewhere so um we haven't even talked about the fact that we went to the bahamas as well like that's that's a huge part of this like we were going to give advice to anyone it's like make the most of the time you get in the bahamas too it's quite touristy um which is to be expected but the fact that you get that um means that like at least at least you know if you're if you're looking for a beachy holiday or an opportunity to swim then you've got it that day that you go to the bahamas and they're going to um grand bahama island next year so um that at least gives you a kind of an opportunity to do that, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. The beach cool. was the beach there was great as well. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, final, final question for you both: What was kind of the, the one takeaway, the one uh, highlight that will kind of live with you for a long, long time? What was kind of your 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 one overriding memory from uh, Jericho Cruise Part Two? Then uh, start with you, Chris. Uh, definitely for me, like I said, I, I wanted to see Kenny Omega wrestle, so that's a big one that I got that on the list. I thought that would be my number one memory. Um, I got to see him three times in a week, so that was great. But it doesn't, it still doesn't beat the leaving the port whilst Fozzie were playing, yeah. seeing the sunset yeah. in Miami. That was that was just a real, um, it, it was just so much better than you expected, and it really set up the week very nicely. So I think that's the one big memory. For me, uh, during the Ric Flair um, portion of the Talking Jericho cruise, he gave some good advice um, about, you know, after his recent, um, you know, health scare, you know, Jericho asked him how he was and how is he okay and what is he doing and how has it changed his outlook on life? And some of the things that he said um, about the way that he lives now was, was really, really inspirational. I'm going to take that with me. I think um, moving forward and I didn't expect to kind of come away from this cruise you know with some really good life advice so I think that was really awesome. And you've come away from the cruise knowing a few more yoga moves as well I'm sure. Oh yeah. Oh, he doesn't call it yoga. <laughs> he, he won't like it. It's broga. Is it broga? No. Broga. <laughs> yeah bro. Uh, the CDPY. Cool. What is it now? Yoga. Yeah cool, and I, cool, we're cool. definitely going to get a DDPY subscription now. He's, like, oh, yeah, he's a good businessman. <laughs> He's already hooked us. There we go. There we go. Well, thank you, Chris, and thank you, Heather. Uh, before we go, and um, before we say goodbye uh, to your next appearance on the podcast, is um, j- just give us some uh, uh, social media links, any any handles, any uh, quick plugs you want to throw out there um, in case any of my listeners want to say hi, get in touch, want to follow you, or Chris, listen to some of your music. Give us a, a quick plug. Uh, starting with you, Heather, do you have any, any social media links you want to throw out there where they can kind of uh, say hi to you or get in touch with you on Instagram or Facebook, yeah. anything like that? That's cool. I don't really use my Facebook. Instagram is usually the place to find me. Um, and I'll probably be posting okay. some pictures and videos from the cruise. If you're interested in those, 
You can find me at H to the Piz Age. So H T O P I Z Z A G E, and that's where you find me. Cool. And uh, that that guy subscribing straight away. Uh, but uh, Chris, uh, what about yourself? Um, half decent music. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I also have a um, Hasbro wrestling toys kind of thing, um, which I, I collect, um, which is half decent Hasbro's on Instagram. Um, follow all of that. If you type in half decent sleep paralysis on YouTube, you'll get my latest music video. I'm also on Spotify and all sorts of things like that. You just search half decent. You'll usually find me. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you two for jumping on this uh, very special bonus episode of uh, Wrestling with Jonas, covering the the Rock and Wrestle Rager part de the Chris Jericho cruise uh, for the second year running. You two want to go again, so you highly recommend it. It sounded like you had an absolute blast. I'm, I'm really, really jealous. I uh, can't wait to see any any pictures you might have as well. Uh, but if any of my listeners want to get in touch, they can and find out more about how the cruise went. But I think you're quite in depth there, quite thorough about your experience. Um, and uh, it sounds like it was a, a lot more highs than there were any lows but uh, there we go so that's the end of this uh, special episode special bonus episode of the wrestling with Jonas podcast so uh, please keep it tuned to the wrestling with Jonas podcast for all of your weekly nxt and aw updates occasional uh, wwe and aw pay-per-view uh, reviews and so much more including exclusive interviews uh, keep it tuned to the Wrestling Majolas uh, podcast. Subscribe to us on the various podcast platforms that are out there. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, YouTube. Uh, we are all over all the popular podcast platforms. And don't forget to follow all of our social media links on Facebook, uh, Twitter and Instagram. And you can get those simply by going to our website, wrestlingwithjohnners.com. All of the links are there at the top of the page. So thanks to Chris. Thanks to Heather. Thank you for coming on and uh, tell us all about your uh, Jericho Cruise Part 2 experience and uh, to all of my listeners thank you for tuning in and we'll catch up with you all again soon. Bye.